Hi everyone, it's Helen Gordon here, all the way from Australia, and I'm Handy Quarters Sweet 16 Ambassador, and this is a segment called Short and Sweet. Today's subject matter is pretty serious, we're going to talk about tension. Tension between that top and bottom thread. A lot of people have trouble with tension on their machines, and we're going to talk about that and solve all those mysteries for you. So one way to think about tension is to think about it as a tug of war between the top and the bottom thread. And they're trying to get a balance between them um, so that the crossover point is in the middle of that fabric. And it is all about balance. So I really would like to change the word, if I may, from tension to balance. Okay, because tension implies something that's always tight. And it isn't necessary that our threads, top and bottom, be really tight for us to get ten a, a balance, okay? What we need to have sometimes is a slightly looser bobbin so that our top thread, if it's a metallic or something fancy like that, is able to still flow through the machine easily and still have that lovely balance. So I've done a little diagram here, hopefully it'll make sense for you. So if we can imagine that this is a cross section through our quilt and the red is our top thread and the yellow is our bobbin thread and we're looking through the magic <laughs> through the side of the quilt there. So this is just one stitch in a line of many stitches. So what happens when we um, work out the tension on our machine, the first job is always to look at that bobbin and to get the bobbin correct. And once we know that bobbin is um, wound correctly, that it's in the little tension discs itself correctly, that it's clean in the tension area, in the bobbin area, we can then insert that bobbin and we sort of decide that the bobbin's correct, all our tension adjustment is now on the top thread. So in this diagram, if that top thread, which is the red, is pulling too high, we can see we get the yellow thread, the bobbin thread, comes up onto the top and makes those little pokies on the top of the quilt. If the other extreme, if the top thread is so loose, it now appears down the bottom of the quilt. We look on the back of the quilt and we see all these loops of top thread or you might see eyelashes etc. Well we're not going to blame the bobbin thread, we're going to say that the top thread is the one that needs to be adjusted. So in this case we would tighten up that top thread that's pulling it. So I'm pulling the little string here and we're pulling that until we get that crossover right in the middle of our quilt. Again if we tighten that top thread too much we're going to see that yellow the bottom thread poking up on top of the quilt. Okay, so what we're striving for is that balance where we can have two different thread colours that they hopefully cross over in the middle of that quilt and one isn't on the top where it shouldn't be, etc. So that's what we're aiming for, is that kind of balance between those two threads. So when we talk about tension, the first thing we've got to look at is that bobbin. So I'm going to get mine out and show you a few little tricks with it. So here's our little bobbin case. Now you might notice that there's a little bluish coloured spring in there. Looks a little bit different to my older machine at home, but that is the backlash spring. These machines can go very fast, of course, so they are an industrial machine, so that sometimes that bobbin is going to continue to spin. So that backlash spring in, spring in there will stop that from um, over, over spinning for us. And sometimes I have seen those little springs will pop out. It's quite easy just to pop them back in. There's two little lugs there that just fit back in and you make sure that little spring is in the bottom there to help you. You need to clean out in there because there can be some fluff get caught up in that um, spring area. The other little spot that's quite important to keep clean is on the side here. The little arm, the little tension arm on the side of the bobbin. This is where I'll get a business card or a piece of paper and I'll carefully slide that underneath there, okay, and take that through. And there'll sometimes be just a teeny bit of fluff caught in there, which can cause all sorts of issues because this is a very specialised little piece here. It's very much, um, it's controlling the tension on the bobbin. So a little bit of fluff can really affect that. So we need to just run that little piece of cardboard through there and make sure that those two little lugs go back into their little holes there so that it's all correct. Okay, so then I put this in my left hand. I am right-handed. I hold the bobbin in my right hand with the thread coming across the top here. And with my thumb I pop that in, make sure I go through the little tensioners there that's over on the side. And now I'm going to do the, the test for the bobbin to see how it's working. Now that is maybe a teeny bit loose. 
okay? I want it to stand up in my hand and almost want to come with me. That's not bad actually, but I am going to show you how I would adjust that if I needed to. So I put my thumb back on the side there and now I've got my little screwdriver and I'm going to come in and look at these two little screw heads here. Now the little one is what's holding the actual tension arm on, so we don't touch the little one, even though this one's still little, but it's a bit bigger, okay? That's the one we play with. Now with this, I need my glasses. It's fine surgery now. So that little blade fits in there and we adjust that little screw by just the teeniest of movement. Okay, I've told you on your tension knob up here, we're going to get aggressive with it up there, but down here, we only move that by just the smallest amount. And this is where we use the lefty loosey righty tighty. It's a universal <laughs> phrase for how to tighten screws. So lefty loosey would be loosening off that tension and righty tighty is increasing it. And when I move that, it's only the smallest little amount. Not much at all. Okay, I'll show you what happens if I over tighten it. Okay, I've now moved that by a good quarter of a turn. Now when I put this in my hand, okay, it doesn't want to run in my hand. Look. That's not good, okay? That is too tight. So that's where I'm going to loosen that off. Because the theory is that if we can have that bobbin a little bit looser, it means the top thread can also be that little bit looser, but between the two of them, we're going to get that beautiful balance. Tension does not have to be tight. Tension has to be balanced. So I'm gonna test that again. No, I want that a bit looser. And you might have to change this every day. Every time you change thread combinations, every time you are stitching on a different quilt type, so it could be layers of raw edge applique, it could be leather, it could be trapunto, it could be double batting, and you're changing your thread combinations with monofilament or metallic, you have to check that tension every single time you sit at your machine. Okay, you've got to check your bobbin and then check your top thread tension with it. We'll pop this back in and we'll look at the top thread now. So I've tried pretty hard here to do a sample of poor tension. It actually is quite hard sometimes to make the machine do what I want to do for a demonstration. But let's have a look at these little samples here. It looks okay from the top. All of these look quite okay from the top. But when we look at the back of the quilt, we start to see problems. I'm just going to hold that up for the camera there. So in this one here, you can start to see little eyelashes. I'm hoping we can zoom in on that. Little black threads that are appearing. Now the black in this case was our top thread and it's appearing on the bottom. So you don't automatically blame the bottom, which is the bobbin, okay? Just because we're looking at the back of the quilt, don't blame the bobbin. Ask yourself what is happening with the top thread. So in this case, that black thread is not being strong enough in that tug of war to stay up on top of the quilt. So that's when we need to tighten so on my little tension dial over here, I'm going to tighten that knob there to tighten the tension discs on that top thread. Now you can see I tightened that by a whole heap. I didn't just come in here and touch it by a teeny bit because that does nothing at all. Okay, it's get quite aggressive with that tension dial so that we make changes. Sometimes we even might loosen it right off and tighten it back in again, but get be prepared to work that knob quite aggressively because you need to adjust that tension. You can see the little spring there and you can actually see from where I'm sitting that that spring is getting tighter and closing down, making the tension on that top thread tighter. So by tightening it, we're going to keep that black thread up on top where it should be. It shouldn't be appearing on the bottom. Now this one here is a nasty mess and this sometimes happens where we have lots of loops of black, which is our top thread, lots of loops on the back there of our quilt. And quite often I'll hear students think that it must be the bobbin that's misbehaving. Well, it actually isn't the bobbin. What's happening here is our top thread had absolutely no tension on it. Okay, it's possibly jumped out of the tension discs here altogether. It's jumped out of that altogether, it has no tension on it whatsoever, and it is now being pulled down to the bottom of our quilt just freely like crazy. Okay, so that's what that mess on the bottom is. And that's when you have to stop and adjust things. So they're examples of what you don't want <laughs> and what you do hopefully want is that lovely balance between top and bottom of those threads. So now I'm ready to stitch and having played with that 
tension knob, I actually don't know where the machine is at. So my very first thing I'll check here, just out of automatic habit, is I just feel the thread here on the side. It's just a quick um, check for me. I do it subconsciously, quite frankly, and I can feel that that is too tight. So I'm going to straight away loosen off that tension. So for me, that is making that spring a bit wider. So as I do that little pull test there, it still feels a little bit tight, so I'm going to loosen that off just a little bit more, and I think that feels pretty good. Now, if this was a metallic thread or a monofilament or something a bit fancy like that, I definitely would want that tension to be a little bit loose, just to give that fancy thread the benefit of the doubt, okay? So from there, I'm gonna start stitching and then check my tension. So hold my top thread, needle down, needle up, So any time you're going to check your tension, I suggest you do some curves and a point. Because often in a straight line of stitching, the attention issue will be disguised and you won't even realise there is an issue until you start doing curves or points or feathers or something fancy. So from the top here it actually looks pretty good, but I can see some white thread, which is my bobbin thread, coming up. So that tells me my top thread is being too tight. He is pulling the bottom thread up, so I want to loosen off that top thread to let the bobbin sit back down on the bottom where it belongs. So again, I'm going to loosen this off, not by that little bit, by a whole heap, by at least, at least a, a full turn. Do another test. And now when I'm looking at my top stitches, I think that looks pretty good, and I am just going to flip that over, I'll just move a little bit. Let's have a look at the back. So ignoring the yellow there, I'm looking at the white stitching, the white is my bobbin, and I can't see any black coming through, so I think I'm pretty happy with that balance. I've got white on the bottom, black on the top. They're in a nice happy balance with each other. Okay, so that's a, that's a good tension setting right there. So I'm happy for that, and I'm gonna start stitching. So I did my little test stitch, but now automatically before I start stitching again, I'm just going to pull on that little thread there, just a little tug, and just see what it feels like. And it's just a little reminder to check, yes, it does feel good, I'm happy with that tension, and off I go for the day. Now remember for this example here today, I have used a black and a white thread just to really try and help us with the whole understanding of tension. And sometimes when you're using those two different colours, you will always get those little pokies on top. They're sometimes quite hard to avoid. So usually it is best to match your thread colours or match them to each other, etc. It depends on the project you're working on. But for today, I did go with the black and the white thread just so we can hopefully understand a bit more about tension. So hopefully that solves some tension issues for you. See you next time.